Over the years, web browsers have made some really dumb decisions. A lot of the time that's to compensate for other browsers making equally dumb decisions, and then websites that are really important abusing those dumb decisions, and you need to work around the website, and there's this giant mess of things just being hacked together. But I think this might be one of the dumbest decisions I've seen. So there is a thing in your web browser called a user agent string. This indicates things about your system, like what OS you're running and all of this other stuff that is not supposed to be relied on. Really, user agent strings probably shouldn't exist and there's probably better ways to communicate this information because this can just be arbitrarily changed to anything you want. For example, I'm running Linux, but this doesn't have to say Linux. I could just pretend to be on Windows and anything that checks the user agent string to see if I'm on Windows is going to think I'm on Windows. But the part that we care about is this right here, the CPU architecture. Being 100% honest about your user agent string generally isn't a good idea. For example, this doesn't mention that I'm on Brave because you don't need to know that if you're seeing my user agent string. If you're on FreeBSD, it probably shouldn't say FreeBSD here and should instead say Linux. I've noticed a lot of browsers don't actually do that though. You don't want to give more fingerprinting information. As for the developer side, the long and short of it is you don't want to ever blindly trust the user agent string. If it's something where it doesn't really matter, go ahead and do so. But for basic functionality, it should not be used. That's not going to stop YouTube doing that though. This is from Hector Martin, who you may recognize from the Asahi Linux project, who noticed a bit of a weird issue with Firefox. So today I learned that YouTube is deliberately crippling Firefox on Asahi Linux. Not specifically Asahi Linux, but on ARCH64, that being 64-bit ARM. If you replace ARCH64 with x86-64 in the user agent string, suddenly you get 4K and everything else as an option. They literally have a test for is ARM, and if so, they consider your system has garbage performance and cripple the available format slash codecs, I checked the code. And it includes this little bit down here, which literally has a check for if you're on ARCH64. So this is the logic. Quality 1080p by default. If your machine has two or fewer cores, quality 480p. If anything ARM, quality 240p. Yes, Google thinks all ARM machines are five times worse than Intel machines, even if you have 20 cores or something. For the record, we are talking about Asahi Linux. This is made to run on the M1, M2, and all of those other M Apple Macs. Those are not weak systems. I think they can handle, you know, at least 1080p, and maybe even with CPU decoding, they can handle 4K. And we know they can, because if you change the user agent string, it just works. Based on the hardware, there is absolutely zero functional reason for why this should be happening. This is entirely YouTube writing some absolutely garbage code that shouldn't exist in the website. Now, initially Hector thought the reason why Chromium wasn't affected is because it pretends to be x86-64. This is what the user agent string looks like by default. That's not actually the case though. It does have this user agent string, but it's not because of the x86-64. If you change that to ARCH-64, the problem doesn't occur on Chromium. Also, the problem doesn't occur if instead of saying that you are Linux, you instead pretend to be Chrome OS. Pretending to be Chrome OS, ARCH64 still gets 4K. So they are doing a lot of processing of the user agent string as if this is a reliable bit of information. Now, all of this would be dumb enough by itself. Don't worry though, because it only gets dumber. So it turns out there is another code path. Apparently, YouTube thinks ARCH64 Firefox is a Hisense TV, specifically model 65A67GEVS. And this right here is the object included. Brand, Hisense, interface name, web, interface version, whatever this number is, model 
E83 GAVT. I think, yeah, that is a different thing that he wrote. I don't know if that's incorrect or if it shows a different model each time, but clearly those don't match. Platform TV. Now, the problem with TVs is the exact same problem that monitors have. Finding information about any particular model number that doesn't have, like, a well-documented, you know, marketing name is very difficult. But I did find this. LCD Television Service Manual. If we search for 65A67GEVS, that is the name of this board here. So this seems like it is the same device. I don't know anything else about it, but it clearly does exist. The really weird part, though, is this isn't some ancient TV release, you know, 10, 15 years ago. They wrote the code then and then never touched it. At least going by the service manual here, this was from 2021. So by all accounts, this is a relatively new TV. Therefore, the code path is relatively new as well. Now, I know some people are really quick to jump to conclusions anytime YouTube's involved. They are obviously trying to destroy Firefox. They don't want you running Firefox and ARM. They want you using Chrome. And I'm sure they would prefer you using Chrome. But I don't think this is necessarily malice. Keep in mind, running an ARM desktop system until fairly recently was a pretty niche thing. Yes, there is Windows ARM, but Microsoft even pretends like that doesn't exist. And outside of the phone market where this problem is not affected because they have a slightly different user agent string and it specifically mentions Android, it isn't really until Asahi Linux and the M1, M2 and so forth Max that anybody is really trying to do this whole running Linux on an ARM-based desktop. Most of the ARM work is either low-powered embedded systems that people are doing their fun things with, things like Raspberry Pis and things like that, or it's like a big cloud server used to compile things like the kernel. The market for ARM on the desktop is super tiny. Even now, it's very tiny, but it's just a little bit bigger. Big enough that someone like Hector Martin is gonna try to run Firefox on it. Here's my thought about what happened. A couple of years ago, this TV came out. It was using Firefox or some modified version of Firefox. It had Firefox in its user agent string. It was an ARM-based system. Somebody wrote this code specifically to deal with this TV. And then there was no thought put into the effect of that code on systems outside of the TV. And since nobody really cared about ARM on a 64-bit desktop up until like super recently, nobody really noticed that the problem was there. And then now it's a problem and now it's getting talked about on a YouTube channel. Now for the record, there is a proper way to deal with finding out what a system is capable of doing. There is literally a whole API dedicated to media capabilities. It's called the Media Capabilities API, and it's supported in look, basically every browser for the past God knows how many years. And here is the fun side benefit of the API. If someone is running a browser that they refuse to update past what? Firefox 63 and Chrome 66, you can probably assume that they're probably also running really old hardware as well that maybe doesn't support a newer browser. Therefore, you can just assume that, hey, it's probably pretty underpowered, let's limit what we can show. Whilst it's unclear exactly why this doesn't affect other systems, Hector believes this, that it only triggers on software decoding, which is why it particularly affects us and not, say, macOS, which has hardware decoding. Now, obviously, the GPU is still there on us here Linux, but they don't have full GPU driver support at this point. There is Vulkan stuff being worked on, it can be used for games, and right now it's still, like, fairly early days. But considering that Novo is, you know, basically good, like, usably okay now, I would not be surprised if at some point that also happens with the Apple Silicon as well. So, as you do, Hector went and made a bug report about it. 
YouTube is capping resolutions to 1080 on Linux ARCH64 user agents. Step to reproduce. Websites such as YouTube are using the CPU architecture in the user agent to make stupid decisions about the platform. In particular, YouTube has decided that all ARM ARM64 systems without hardware video encoding are wimpy and underpowered and cripples available video resolutions for them regardless of the actual performance. This is the best part though. Firefox already fakes this for Windows, always claims to be x32 or x64, x86, x86-64, even on ARM, and for macOS, always claims to be Intel Mac OS X 10.15, even on ARM. There is absolutely no reason to report the real CPU architecture only on Linux, and e.g. Chromium on ARCH64 Linux claims to be x86-64 too. Firefox should do the same. Now apparently some sites are even dumber. They assume if you're on ARM, therefore you're on mobile. I've encountered this with ARCH64 in other forms. Various websites which should know better will point blank refuse to serve you anything but their mobile site unless you tell Firefox to pretend it's an x86 machine. That seems to be the logic. Anything ARM must be a phone, whatever it says to the contrary. Now, the reason the user agent string was faked on these other platforms is, as said here, due to fingerprinting issues. Why it wasn't also replicated on Linux because of the same reason, I don't really understand. But it has been discussed in the past. Why it wasn't done then, I don't really know. And considering what was happening to Hector, one of the stated goals of this one, you know, I think they might be right. Reduce risk of web compat problems from unexpected CPU architectures. And there was also this one from five years ago. Just get rid of the architecture altogether. So before it would look like, you know, something like this. And the end goal is, okay, don't even care about the architecture. If you're on ARM, if you're on x86, whatever, who cares what you're on? Just say the OS and that is all. As it currently stands, this issue has not been addressed in upstream Firefox. Considering it's just a string and you know what string to replace it with is not a difficult problem to actually fix yourself. But it is annoying that every single user is going to be affected by it. As such, there is a downstream fix specifically made in the context of Asahi Linux. And I do love the name. Add workaround for evil websites for Firefox. Like, I don't know if you'd call them evil or just incompetent, but you know, either works. This solution basically just hard codes, don't say you're on AR64 because there's no reason to do that because then the problem goes away. Now, there is a kind of legitimate reason to check the user agent string. If you're going to a website and it automatically provides you a download for the platform you're on. Understandable. Sure, go ahead with it. You probably still shouldn't 100% trust it because oftentimes the user agent string is lied about, but it's at least an okay use. Assuming the performance of a platform based on the user agent string or assuming that it's a mobile platform is not at all how that's supposed to work and any developer doing that, please go and rewrite the code right now because that is a terrible way to use it. I'm not turning my lights back on. I forgot to record the outro. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, leave very pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And this is the most scuffed outro I think I've ever done.